Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to begin generating functions. Generating functions are interesting because they allow us to look at questions like this algebraically. So before, when we said x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 12, where all of our x's are between 0 and 6, we'd have to use the inclusion-exclusion principle. But instead, there's an algebraic way that we can get a function. And we can take that function, extract a coefficient, and that will be our number of solutions. So how do we look at this question? Well, what we do is we introduce this notation, and every generating function is going to be a formal power series. We'll get to that in a second. But when we take a look at x1, so let's do x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 12. This means we need to choose 12 total objects. So to do that, what we're looking for is the coefficient of x to the 12. And the power is always going to be the number of ways you can choose that object. So for instance, for x1 here, we can choose it 0 times because x can be as low as 0. We can choose it 1 time, 2 times, 3 times, four times, five times, or six times. So this is x1 because it has to be between zero and six. So we're saying, okay, we're gonna let the powers equal that number. And then we do it the same for the second one and the third one. So we'll just cube that because we're doing the same thing three times. And then we want the number of ways to get to x12. So we want the coefficient of x12. Because, say we have x3 times x4 times x5, that's the same thing as saying 3 plus 4 plus 5. And x12 is going to have all the possible combinations of getting there. So that's going to answer our question of how many ways are there to solve x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 12, where all of our x's are between 0 and 6 kind of a cool thing. In fact, here's another example. Suppose we have red, blue, and white jelly beans. How do we select 20 of them if we have to have an even amount of reds? There has to be at least 14 blue, but there's also less than 5 white. Okay, well, for our reds, they have to be even, right? So we can have 0. So I'm always going to write x to the 0 as a 1. So we can pick 0. We can pick two of them, so we have x squared. We can pick four of them, so we have x to the four. We can pick six of them, and we can go all the way up to pick 20 of them. We can go on for infinity if we want to, but for the sake of this example, we're only picking a total of 20, so let's not go over 20. What about at least 14 blue? Well, that means the smallest amount we can pick is 14, so x to the 14 plus x to the 15, because we can have any number after 14. So this will go all the way up to x to the 20. And we have to have less than 5 white. So that means that we can pick 0 white, or 1 white, or 2 whites, 3 whites, or 4 whites. So we can't pick 5, because it has to be less than 5. So this is the generating function for the number of ways we can select red, blue, and white jelly beans. So specifically, we're saying how many ways can we select 20 of them? So we're looking for the 20th coefficient here, the coefficient of x to the 20. But we can also take a look at any other coefficient we want. So we could see how many ways there are to pick only 17 jelly beans. If we wanted to, of course, we don't have to. but it's available. So this is the power of generating functions. We're solving the same question for every different value of n we could ever want all at once. So that's another good example. One more. This involves making money. So what is the generating function for ways to make n cents using pennies, nickels, and dimes? So I'm not asking for any specific amount of cents. I just want to know Okay, for any given number, how many possible ways can I make it? So, 
Let's do pennies. We want x to the n because that'll be n cents. So we want to deal with everything in terms of cents. So with pennies, you can have zero cents or one cent or two cents or three cents. And that just goes on for infinity. With nickels, you can have zero cents or you can have five cents or you can have 10 cents, so on and so forth. Again, we go by fives because we're dealing with cents, not with the number of nickels. We have to deal with the number of cents. And of course, for dimes, we can have zero cents or 10 cents or 20 cents, so on and so forth. So if we want to say how many ways can we do 7 cents, well, we can just multiply them out and see how many ways there are to get x7. Uh, if we want to get, say, $10 million, then we can take a look at 1 billion x's, so x to the 1 billion. We can do whatever we want. So that's pretty cool. Now, what really is a generating function, though? Because we have a power series here. So a power series is basically the sum of a co coefficient with the power of x. So we have a0 x to the 0 plus a1 x to the 1 plus a2 x to the 2, so on and so forth. So nicer we can write this a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, so on, where this a is the coefficient. So when I said, what is the coefficient of x12 of some function, then you would say, oh, that's whatever a12 is. So when we take a look at this, at these generating functions here, all of our coefficients in these generating functions are just one. But when we multiply them out, they turn into a different number because that's the amount of ways we can do whatever we're asked to do. So here's the thing. We have those long equations and those aren't the nicest things to work with. So we can make them shorter. And the example I'm gonna give you is one over one divided by x. And we're going to use long division to figure out what this is. Okay, so 1 minus x, we're going to divide this into 1. So if you forgot polynomial long division, hopefully this will jog your memory. But 1, div 1 minus x goes into 1 one time. So then we multiply 1 minus x by 1. We put it below, just like in long division, and then we subtract. So we get 0 plus x, because we're subtracting. Okay, so now we have x left here. So how many times does 1 minus x go into x? Well, it goes in x times. So x times 1 minus x is x minus x squared. Of course, we subtract this and we end up with x squared. So how many times does 1 minus x go into x squared? It goes in x squared times. And you can see we can keep doing this forever. So 1 over 1 minus x is going to equal 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is going to generate the sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, so on and so forth. So every coefficient is going to be 1 in this example. So I'm going to, this is, this is something that you have to know. You have to memorize this or you have to be able to reason this out because these are crucial. So what I'm going to show you now is not long division, but I'm going to tell you what the series looks like and what the generating or the coefficients look like. So one minus X to the N plus one over one minus X is the same thing as before, but it's going to stop when it gets to x to the n. So what this will look like is it'll look like a bunch of ones until it gets to the nth term. So this is the nth term, and then it's gonna be a bunch of zeros afterwards. So that's what that series is gonna look like. And when we have one divided by one plus x, 
what we end up is with the alternating series. So 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth, so on and so forth. So that's going to take a look like 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, so on and so forth. When we have 1 over 1 minus a to the x, that's going to be a to the 0 plus a to the 1x plus a squared x squared plus a cubed x cubed dot dot dot. So this sequence is going to look like 1 a a squared a cubed so on and so forth. So these are very crucial ones that you need to know. Of course you can do, you can do polynomial long division to prove this to yourself but you don't really need to. Just take it for granted. These are right for sure. Of course, when you have generating functions, you can also take their derivatives because it's a polynomial, so we can use calculus. So if we take 1 over 1 minus x all squared, it's just the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. So let's take the derivative of the power series. When we take the derivative of the power series, if you don't know calculus, don't worry about the details, just memorize the solution. Or, you know, you can learn basic calculus too. This is going to be zero. So let's make sure I'm on the right tool here. This will be zero because the derivative of one is zero. The derivative of x is one. The derivative of x squared is two x. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So you get this nice sequence now. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be the increasing sequence where every number is just one ahead of the last one. So you can use derivatives and you can get new sequences. So again, this is also another important one that you should probably know. All right, so what what if I say, okay, find the coefficient of x to the 6 in this sequence? Well, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to equal 7. It's going to be 7x to the 6, because it used to be just x to the 7, but then we took its derivative, so now it's 7x to the 6th. So if we want the coefficient of x to the n, it's just going to be n plus 1 in this sequence. So that's another way of looking at it. All right. What happens when we take a generating function and then we multiply it by something? So here we have x cubed over 1 minus x. Now, this can be written as x cubed times 1 over x. So, sorry, 1 over 1 minus x. So if we write out the power series, it just kind of looks like this. It's x cubed times 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed goes on forever. And we can just distribute it into the function. So we have x cubed plus x fourth plus x to the fifth plus x to the sixth go on forever. So what this really is, is this is just shifting the generating function over. So what we have here is because we're shifting it by x cubed, we have zeros for the first three, and then we have ones for the rest. So that's how multiplication works. Again, it's not too complicated. So if I say, okay, I want x to the sixth of x cubed over one minus x, this is really the same thing as saying I want x of 6 minus 3 times 1 over 1 minus x, because all we did was we shifted over by 3 powers. So when we take the coefficient, we just need to shift it back 3. So x to the 6th, or the coefficient of x to the 6th of x cubed over 1 minus x, it's really the same thing as saying I want x cubed of 1 over 1 minus x. This is a very useful skill that will be used in further examples. So here's the final question. 
what is the generating function for x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 12 with a couple more restrictions? x1 has to be greater than 2, x2 has to be between 3 and 6, and x3 has to be less than or equal to 9. Well, this could be very challenging using inclusion-exclusion, but we can make this pretty simple just doing it with generating functions. So x1 has to be bigger than 2, so this just means it's x squared plus x cubed plus x fourth, and we can take it forever because it doesn't matter how high we go, because if we have x27, well, it's never going to add up to x12 or multiply to x12, so we don't need to worry about it. Um, x2 has to be between 3 and 6, so let's do that one in light green. So here we start at x cubed, and we just go up to x fourth plus x5 plus x6. Okay, that's as far as it can go. And this next one has to be below x to the 9. So we can start with 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up to x to the 9. So that's our generating function. Well, it's a few formal power series. We can simplify this. So here's what we'll do. We're going to take x squared out of the first series, so that way we start at 1, and well, we know what this generating function is, so this is just going to be x squared times 1 over 1 minus x, which was just the same thing as x squared over 1 minus x, so these are all equivalent. With this next generating function, we can just take out an x cubed, and we'll have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. And if you remember from before, this is the same thing as x cubed times 1 minus x to the 4 over 1 minus x. Again, you'll need to do a few practice problems in order to memorize these things and get them right. So this doesn't really need to be simplified at all. But what we can do is we can just sort of put the coefficients out front, so we could make this x to the 5 instead of x squared. And then we'll multiply by 1 minus x to the 4 over 1 minus x. And this last one, well, we only want to go up to x to the 9, so this is just going to be 1 minus x to the 10 over 1 minus x. So that's the generating function for x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 12 with those conditions. Of course, how do we find coefficients? Well, we're going to get to that in the next video and the video after that, but you now have the basics to turn any counting problem into a generating function. So hopefully this helped. Uh, I definitely recommend going online, finding practice problems for this, and just getting used to turning these questions into generating functions. Um, these are very popular questions, the coefficient changes. Um, having n sense going into something else is good. Uh, jelly bean selection, which you can do with balls or lotteries or whatever you want. Um, I'll be covering an example with dice next time, so we can talk about how we turn dice into these generating functions as well. So that's all. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to them as soon as I possibly can. Hopefully you found this helpful.